Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to another Railway Empire video. This is a quick guide for a pass-through warehouse two-city cluster using our version 1.7 functionality, which means we have what I call the super stations, which automatically distribute your load amongst the tracks, and a super warehouse, which does the same thing, automatically uses whatever lane platform is empty as a train comes into the station. And I wanted to do this, one, to make it a quick guide so that you could just have something very fast to reference and also uh, to clear up some things about these warehouses and the, uh, you know, this, uh, the super station, so to speak. And the first thing I see here, we've already got a new industry. I'm going to pop a textile in there because that's something else I want to talk about and show you. Okay, so first of all, what is the theory of a pass-through warehouse? The theory is that I have a warehouse centrally located or on the route between, somewhere on the route between two cities that I want to grow. And I'm thinking of this as a two-city cluster I want to grow, Toledo and Grand Rapids. I've got a warehouse in a central point that they can both, uh, both lines can get to, both cities. And in this case, best, best uh, advice is put it where you can pick up one of the goods you want to deliver. And you'll want to deliver to, to your cities the fundamental things that are nearby. So I've got it set up to take wheat, corn, logs, sugar, milk, and veggies. So I've set up lines for all of these running into that warehouse. And with these, pat, with these special um, stations and warehouses, I think a good way to do it is just to go ahead and build your four lines running in parallel so you get this beautiful little super highway of track running you know from your city to your warehouse to your other city set your directional signals and then that gives you something on either side that your goods can come into and hook into your network and be able to go run to your warehouse with no problem and you can see our warehouse here is barely even used okay so, well, it actually it is used quite a bit, but, uh, but you can see it's handling it just fine. So what we're going to do now, I wanted to show you how to set up your actual pass-through. So the idea of the pass-through is that you start at one of the cities, you go to the warehouse, you go to the other city, and then you go back to the warehouse. Now, when you first start one of these, if you do one early, and I do not recommend you do these too early in a scenario because you won't have the money. But if you do them early, you can set them up as automatic and run some passengers and, and mail. But what you really should do once your cities grow a little bit or if you have the money to do it, kind of, quote, do it right from the beginning, you want to set these up as freight-only lines. The reason, and you'll see why in a moment. So here's a line running from Grand Rapids to the warehouse to Toledo to the warehouse. The idea is that the way these things load, it'll automatically take any goods created in Grand Rapids that are needed in Toledo, load them onto the train. If there's any additional space, when it stops at the warehouse, it'll top off with the goods that are in the warehouse that are needed in Toledo. It'll run to Toledo, drop everything off, pick up goods in Toledo that are needed in Grand Rapids, go to the warehouse, top off with anything else that uh, is there needed in Grand Rapids, and move on, and you're shuttling goods basically back and forth between these two cities. So that way you get all your goods moved back and forth, and you get the uh, um, raw materials that are in the warehouses back and forth. So let's just fire one of those off. And the one thing about these uh, super stations is we don't even have to worry about tracks. It'll just automatically grab one and go. So I'm going to do two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven. We're going to stress this thing. We're going to run eight trains. Now, why so many trains? Because these trains are serving the purpose of moving the goods back and forth between these cities and all these raw materials. They are really our delivery system for six different raw materials plus right now three different goods that are being manufactured. And you'll notice that I've got all these, um, the ones going to the warehouse are plugged into this system here and going in. Uh, a couple, in this particular case, we've got a couple of semi-fancy ones. We've got the milk is going down here, grabbing this line, and then going over to this line, the corn line that's going into the warehouse. Same thing with the sugar coming down, 
going on here, crossing over, going in, to so stay out of the city itself. But our meat, and I strongly recommend is our cattle, rather, is going directly into Toledo. So it has a direct line into Toledo. And that's the other point I wanted to make. This weaving industry that just cropped up that we put into Toledo, we want to run our cotton directly into Toledo. You do not want to run cotton or cattle into your warehouse because it's only needed by one of the two cities in your cluster. So there's no point in tying up that, that valuable line with, um, with um, items that are only needed in one of the cities. So I'm going to run a direct line from my cotton plantation, Williams Estate, into our line. It's very easy to hook it up into the system because we have the double track on either side. So whichever side you're coming from, you can grab a line. So we're going to set up our signals like so, and it won't be hooking up with a warehouse so, or a supply tower, rather. So we'll give it a supply tower and run our cotton directly into Toledo. Whoops. Okay, so now we're feeding cotton directly into Toledo. We're feeding uh, cattle directly into Toledo. And we could, if, they re if, it re if both of the cities really grow, you could consider, since we've got beer up here, we could consider running an additional line that runs wheat straight into Grand Rapids to make sure it gets plenty. Now, you notice all these, all these X's here? That's where I've got, I've got like three trains, and we don't need that many. Now, why is that? Because I've set this up to have a limit of 20. See how we've got 16 milk? Neither city is actually needing milk yet. They will soon as they're starting to grow. But our milk has already filled up the warehouse. Those are going to queue up and wait. So we could, if you need, we're tied for money, you could get rid of some of those trains or not run so many right off the bat. But uh, these things are going to grow rapidly. And as they do, uh, you're going to, these um, trains are going to be needed to keep the supply in these cities. So um, you can see here, we're getting 75% growth in Toledo. We're getting 71% in Grand Rapids. And, and those trains haven't even started coming back to Grand Rapids. There, they're just starting to come back to Grand Rapids with supplies. So now we've got a network where we have um, basically been able to just this simple, kind of clean looking design to have a situation where we are growing two cities and they will grow beautifully. And as long as you just keep track of the industries that are in them, so like in Grand Rapids, when it's it's 40, there's going to, an industry is going to open up, put something in there that we are supplying that can be used in both of these cities. A good, a good one would be a sawmill in this map, in this time frame, a small mill. So you just want to keep your, keep an eye on your industries and see what's our next one up. Or a tailor. A tailor would be great. Tailor probably even next step because we've got um, the um, weaver here. It could supply the tailor on our pass-through lines. And then we've got a tailor. And then the next thing after that, we could build a sawmill because we've got lumber. We know we've got that. And then if we wanted to, you could put a distillery. Let's say you put a distillery in Toledo and run your, we've already got sugar coming in. Then we could run the uh, fruit into Toledo and have a distillery. Or you could pass on the distillery, go to dairy farm because we've got milk. So you get the idea. You want to have six industries eventually in your two city cluster that can all help the cities grow. So I just wanted to go through the, and watch how, let's just speed this thing up and watch how effectively. And by the way, you would want to have your maintenance eventually. As you know, when I play uh, scenarios, I often don't even set maintenance because uh, I'm playing too fast and I don't want to slow things down. But eventually you'd want to have your maintenance and, and ideally you'd even go out and set maintenance out in these um, stations out here so that some or, or some of your maintenance would be handled out here in the, uh, in the field, so to speak. But if you watch this thing, we're running a ton of trains through here. And watch how beautifully it works. They're just, they're just going in there. They're taking, taking whatever station is open. 
they're just flying through here. Goods are just flying through. See that that one's topping off with stuff to take to Toledo. This one's topping off with stuff to take to Grand Rapids. Um, even with the breakdowns and everything else that happens to slow you down. Here we've got a breakdown, a bad place, doesn't matter, minor delay, off we go. Everything looks cool. Now, if you wanted to have passengers, of course, what you could do is just put in another another station. You could, you could conceivably run them through there, but I would not advise it. I would not run them through the same thing. You could just set up a couple more stations. And we could run a passenger line. as a separate thing and that would be a good money maker and you could even depending upon your character and your goals for a mission you're playing you could start with the passenger only line to get your income going quickly and then of course that passenger line is going to get faster and faster and better and better as your cities grow you're going to make more and more money on it so i would advise setting up a passenger line well, in fact just to be let's go ahead and just make it a Let's make it a regular train station so we can run two sets of track. Don't ha you don't have to, you can certainly do point to point, but let's run two sets of track like so. And we can run passengers on this set of track. And then use the other uh, tracks. You can expand this station into a large station and use the other set to go out and hook up passengers or or freight or whatever you chose to do with the rest of your network not well with other cities that you could include in your network i should be saying so now we can i think i forgot to put a supply tower in there oh one other thing on the design of your uh, uh, pass through warehouse. Notice I've got the supply the where the supply tower is fairly close to the warehouse. I did that because we want to be able to hook up and catch the where the uh, supply towers any lines that come into the system to be able to catch that. So like this is a good example here. We want to come in and catch that supply tower. That way it saves us having to build one out in the country for that just for that uh, that one line. But so now we can set up our two to two passenger and mail only. And we could grab a, an Austin uh, Express train. Notice how full it's running because we've got two growing cities here talking to each other. Run one back the other way. There we go, and now we've got ourselves a nice passenger and, and uh, mail line running here. We've got our uh, line going here, and notice these cities are just, look at this, 93% growth rate at, at 58,000. Uh, everybody's getting supplied. We would want to keep an eye on our businesses. There we go. Got an opportunity to put one in here. So we said, let's put in a tailor. Off we go. We probably want to... Uh, start bumping these up and make the tailor a, a level two and then we'd want the matching down here we would want a level two weaver down here and of course we would do a museum and it's all growing so fast that it's hard to even keep up with and that's a great thing that's exactly what we want so there you go there's there's a pass-through warehouse can you, do you have to have these uh, super stations do it? Of course not. Works great without them, but um, much easier to set up with the uh, super stations, the, um, <laughs> the ones with the automated control signals. So I just wanted to give you that quick guide to, to point out a few things. Make sure you're running freight lines through here. If you want to run passengers and mail, have a separate line. Feed into your um, warehouse. Pick up a good, if you can, as an automatic load through the catchment area of the warehouse in the middle, run your pass-through lines, and feed it with six, six uh, the most six fundamental things you can get, 
take uh, for as far as city growth, make sure that you get the right industries in here, that they're going to feed back and forth, and you should have tremendous growth and be able to really rock and roll with this. These guys will grow and grow and grow uh, using this setup with very mi minimal. Uh, I barely have to look at this going down the road except maybe to check the uh, industries and make sure they're at appropriate levels and make sure we get, uh, you know, a logging um uh, a lumber mill and maybe a furniture or a dairy or whatever make sure we get six good industries in there and that's all that's that's it uh, they will they will fly up to 120 150 even bigger uh in population 150,000 or better uh with this kind of a setup so i hope that helps you kind of clear up how to do a two city cluster with a pass through warehouse using the new functionality I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.